Food systems are probably the most ancient human construct. We have been developing new methods, processes, and techniques for the capturing and transforming of food into human nourishment for millennia. Our relationship with the Earth changed fundamentally when we began to practice agriculture some 10,000 years ago, as it gave rise to the formation of advanced civilization. And even today, agriculture can be said to still be the foundation to our economies. As such, agriculture is one of the few economic processes that we are critically dependent upon, and it has been identified as the predominant driver of growth in many low- and middle-income countries, more effective at reducing poverty than growth originating in any other sector. The global food system of today is truly complex in nature, crossing almost all areas, from climate, water and energy, to finance and commodity markets, to politics and culture. All are interconnected through our global food system. Today's food and agribusiness forms a $5 trillion global industry, a complex system spanning from the small self-sufficient farmer in rural India to multinational corporations trading commodities on international markets. Much of the apparatus of our current industrial food system was developed during the 20th century with the so-called Green Revolution. This somewhat radical movement formalized into what is today the conventional agricultural system, which has been defined as being capital-intensive, large-scale, highly mechanized agriculture, with the monoculture of crops and extensive use of artificial fertilizers, herbicides, and pesticides, and with intensive animal husbandry. In developed economies, these changes have led to the displacement of food production at the individual, local, and community level. Food production along many dimensions has been outsourced to multinational corporations and large agribusinesses. The bulk of human population today are consumers rather than producers, dependent on the global market economy for their daily food. Although the centralized model has been a key driver of increased productivity in terms of calorie production, it has created many negative environmental and social externalities that the public are becoming increasingly aware of. There have been concerns about our farming practices for some time now, but it is only very recently that these concerns have become a topic of any serious discourse in the public sphere. Today, public opinion and trust in their food system is at an all-time low within developed economies. Our centralized industrial food system that we developed over the past couple of centuries is increasingly failing to meet a number of required outcomes. Firstly, in terms of quantity and distribution, food demand will increase by an estimated 50 to 100 percent by 2050 due to increased population and affluence, while at the same time productivity gains are significantly diminishing. This is all while there remains many dysfunctional imbalances in the distribution of food globally, a dynamic that is appearing less and less sustainable. Secondly, consumers are increasingly health-conscious, placing greater importance on environmental sustainability, demanding food traceability, and local products. This is most visible in developed markets, but more and more in emerging markets likewise. Conventional systems are struggling to meet this due to their inherent characteristics. Thirdly, food security has become a major concern for many nations, given the recent food crisis and global food market volatility. Governments are looking towards bolstering a diverse set of local sources to secure their food supplies. Lastly, environmental degradation and climate change are moving to the forefront of people's concerns, with agility, adaptability, and resilience increasingly necessary characteristics that our current centralized linear food systems are lacking. These limitations within our current food system are opening up a whole new set of possibilities and solutions that run on a very different structure and set of principles. Today, huge potential and value lies in the whole negative space around the centralized monocultural system. Massive amounts of environmental, social, and cultural capital have been left on the table due to the inherent structure of the linear model. All of this external value can only be tapped into and harnessed effectively by shifting to a new paradigm, a more complex, decentralized, networked model. Driven by demand and enabled by information technology, we can already see these new capabilities emerging at the forefront of innovation in food systems. Value chains across all industries are being disrupted by technology, and this is no different for the food industry. Information technology is enabling a new, more decentralized peer-to-peer -peer model where collaborative platforms connect producers directly to the consumer. These platforms enable much greater transparency and end-to-end -end integration across the food value network. This integration and transparency is key to tackling the single greatest potential source of productivity gain within the system. That is the current vast amount of waste all along the supply chain.
Over the last 10 years or so, we have become aware to the scale of waste that is now estimated at a staggering one-third of all food produced globally. Today, the ideas of the circular economy are being increasingly applied to the food industry. In order to capture this value, we need to move away from the linear model to developing a multidimensional, non-linear architecture to our food systems, making it significantly more complex in nature. Small startups are already building businesses out of closing loops within the supply chain, while large food corporations like Danone are making circular economy principles a core part of their strategy in order to capture and retain this value. Much of the innovation in food systems today is in the last mile of the value chain, no longer just putting products on a shelf, but actually going all the way to delivering nutritional outcomes. With information technology, we can now know what the end user wants, provide them with a customized service and the desired outcome that they aspire to. This means engaging much more with the behavior dimension to the system, delivering exactly what the customer wants when they want it. Working together with them towards achieving their nutritional and dietary outcomes is a major new expanse of opportunity within the overall food system of tomorrow, one that can be a source of benefit to both consumers, producers, and society, if done effectively. Finally, agility and resilience need to be a core competency of any next-generation food system. Switching to a more distributed platform model will be key to enabling greater agility and resilience within food systems. The standard model has led to a high level of centralization and intermediation within the system that reduces adaptive capacity. IT platforms that can integrate across the value chain offer the possibility of a much more agile system. Directly connecting producers to consumers can reduce dependency on centralized hubs and offer the capacity to foster greater diversity within the system through the customization of end-user demand. These are just some of the topics and recommendations from our Food Systems Report. Download the full paper that looks at the current state of the global food system and solutions for developing next-generation IT-enabled distributed food platforms.